Happy Saturday. It's November 11th, 2023. We're here in Talkeetna at the Talkeetna Depot and the Aurora is coming in on its weekly trek from Anchorage to Fairbanks and back again. A little bit of a trivia for you. Uh, there are three letters capitalized in Aurora, uh, technically two since it is a name. Um, what letters are they and what do they stand for? It dates all the way back to the original Aurora of 1947. If you know the answer, leave it in the comments. And again, looks like we got the 4328. It's the Centennial locomotive. As you can see, uh, it just snowed the other day here. It's sticking for the year. November 5th is when we got our first real snowfall. We got ourselves a big train. Look at that. In the words of Jawtooth, live action, folks. Why are there two baggage cars on this train? Well, I'll tell you. The rear bag car, which is the 101, that's the main baggage car that's used uh, for all passenger operations. And the head end bag car behind the two locomotives, uh, they're used to hold the winter emergency supplies, which would include lots of water, emergency kerosene heaters blankets, all that stuff, as well as the uh, freezers and refrigerators to accommodate ESS. ESS is the contractor that does all the catering and the, the train cleanup and all that. So uh, since the uh, dining car is technically the first passenger car, um, it makes sense to have the ESS stuff in the front bag car. Um, and they tack on the rear bag car because it's easier for winter operations with flag stoppers and what have you. All right, well, let's pause this video and let's go up towards the shelter uh, on the north end of the platform here and let's see what they're doing. All right, and as you can see, they got the uh, bag car doors open and uh, Jim is the year-round station agent and he's getting ready to load and offload the baggage cars usually more loading here in Talkeetna than there is offloading in the wintertime reason being is there's a lot of uh, flag stoppers that rely on the train here so they'll load up uh, crates and you can see the big crates and the small crates small crates is what uh, is used to uh, move regular Size pieces of luggage and the big crates, which you can see here, is being picked up. Um, that's what flag stoppers will use to put all their totes and their supplies in. I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but um, there is no fuels allowed on the train, meaning no gas, no diesel. Um, I know I mentioned kerosene heaters for the emergency equipment. There's a there's a waiver uh, for that. I won't get into the full details on when they can and can't uh, put on a train, but flag stoppers and people in general, they can't bring fuels, gas, diesel, uh, things like that, propane. That service 
is provided through the Tundra Express. And the Tundra Express basically is a large high rail truck um, that goes between Talkeetna and Hurricane. And they'll bring all the stuff that can't go on the train. Propane, gas, diesel, oils, uh, snow machines, four-wheelers, six-wheelers, anything that can't fit in the train will go on the Tundra truck. And it'll get dropped off at each person's uh, trail. Their, their trail had a long track. Um, one one channel that is really good at showing that kind of stuff uh, on the off grader side of things is Kermudge Inn. Check out Rob and Sarah's channel, Kermudge Inn. They're on YouTube. And uh, they live at milepost 239.5. And if you've watched Reverend Alaska, you'll recognize maybe the milepost that was. Uh, Jim James's old stop, and of course Jim James was a real character up the tracks. He's since passed on, and Rob and Sarah have uh, purchased the place, and they moved in and done a bunch of work to the to the place and made their own. And Rob and Sarah have videos that show the Tundra truck offloading all of their supplies that don't get on the train, as well as. Um, getting on and off the hurricane turn and the aurora and what have you. So you can see what's happening here and we're gonna go up to the head end and take a look at the locomotives. And just a quick note, that um, that 31 there, that actually isn't a locomotive. That is a um, HEP car or a cab car. It was an Amtrak F40, um, it was F40PH. Uh, don't quote me on the exact model. And during its life, it was uh, converted into a cab car right before Alaska Railroad got it, along with 32. The reason why this is on the end of the uh, passenger train is uh, another backup measure in case there's a breakdown or something along the way and they need extra uh, power for the cars. Uh, head and power, meaning there's uh, power for the, for the passenger train consists. There's a big generator inside there in place of the prime mover and the other reason is if there's a avalanche or something uh, along the way the uh, crew can go to the uh, cab car here and they can do their reverse movement pretty easy all right don't mind the Alaskan windshield it's kind of a, a normal thing here and as you can see, there's people not paying attention. Looks like there's onboard supervisor there. Well, I'm gonna pause this again so I can pay attention to this car or these uh, these folks here. Hey, we're here at the head end. Here's 4328. And that's, uh, that's the engineer saying, uh, basically, we're going to leave you. <laughs> engineer said, okay, bye. Good to see you. I think that's what he said. So this is what the locomotives used to look like, or at least the uh, scheme that they used to wear back in the uh, late 40s and 50s. Um, I don't think that... Uh, they, uh, they, they blew for you all to get on the train. That's what they were doing. They, they're wanting you to get on the train. Are you getting back on the train? Because they're calling all aboard.
All right, well, we're going to go up to uh, maybe Second Street here and see if we can't catch them there. All right, so we're here uh, basically in the Mahays parking lot. There's a high tracker trailer. I got my kids here, Thomas and Alice. Sometimes they come along with me on my train adventures. Hey, don't get, don't step in the snow. You don't have your snow pants on. That was engineer Billy Bivens. He's the most senior engineer on the railroad now. He's number one. That's all she wrote here, folks. Thanks for watching on this beautiful Saturday morning. And uh, thanks for watching and subscribing. Be sure to leave a comment below. Hello. Have a good one.